anyone who has passed through an airport or major public building is familiar with the modern miracle of metal detectors. When properly operated, these scientific instruments ensure that no weapons or other metallic devices can ever be taken into the areas they guard. Detectors operate quietly and simply, yet they are amazingly efficient in discovering any metallic object that passes near them. Among the most efficient of these is an instrument that has been acclaimed throughout the world as the ultimate in handheld metal detectors. This is the Garrett Super Scanner, familiar to air travelers, sports fans, tourists, and business people around the globe. Let's now look at the Super Scanner a little more closely and learn just exactly how it operates. The power switch is located where it can be reached easily with the thumb. As diagrammed on the detector itself, the switch can be turned on or off. When the switch is pressed up, the detector is on. Also, the green alert light located above the on-off switch will illuminate. This green LED will remain illuminated until the super scanner is turned off. The super scanner is called a motion detector. That means that it must be moving slightly for metal to be detected. You cannot hold the detector stationary over an area and expect it to detect metal. You'll soon become accustomed to this motion. This broad sword-like area is where the instrument detects metal. Whenever any metallic object comes near this area, this sound will be heard. Not only does the super scanner alert the operator of the presence of metal with an audible alarm, the red LED illuminates as an additional target alarm for the operator. The super scanner is powered by a single 9 volt battery. This battery can be expected to last for several days or even weeks depending on how often the detector is used. The super scanner is designed to let you know when it's time to change the battery by the tone it makes when detecting metal. This is the normal tone. Now compare that with this tone it will make when the battery starts getting weak. Also, the amber alert light on the side of the super scanner will illuminate when the battery is low. Approximately one hour of battery time is left on the super scanner once the amber light appears. Changing batteries is a simple matter with the super scanner. Simply slide open the end piece by the safety sling, tilt the super scanner, and let the battery slide out. Now, just slip in a fresh battery and slide the door shut. Right below the earphone jack is the push button that lets you reduce the unit's detection sensitivity for certain types of scanning. We'll talk more about that later. Remember, all of this information is shown here just above the handle of the detector. This safety sling on the super scanner is a feature designed to help the operator hold the detector securely and prevent it from being knocked from his or her hand. The super scanner is designed simply so that it will be easy to use and because it operates automatically, there's never any reason for adjusting or tuning it in any way. Yes, it's simple and it works. Now, let's learn just how easy the Super Scanner is to use and how anyone can use it effectively. Operators should understand that even though their work with the Super Scanner may sometimes seem routine and repetitious, how you doing? they are continually looking for weapons that can injure or kill. You may be the only one who can prevent a disaster. Hi, how are you? Be professional and efficient at all times when you are inspecting a person. Trying to divert you in some way could be the method used to smuggle in a weapon. When you're dealing with the public, it isn't necessary to be stuffy or officious, but operators must remember that they are performing an important task and take whatever steps are necessary to carry it out. 
You should always remember that you are in control when you're inspecting a person. He or she cannot pass inspection and move into a secured area until you clear them. This video presentation will give you some basic techniques and tips to use when scanning, but you'll soon develop your own methods as you learn more about the instrument and its capabilities. Always keep trying to do a better and more thorough job of inspecting, and you'll find that to inspect a person properly, you should make certain that he or she is standing in an area where you have room to approach from all four sides. Would you turn, please? First, check the back side, scanning downward from the shoulders, down one leg and back up to the other shoulder. Be careful to check around the belt line where a weapon could be hidden. Men must remove their hats, and you will always scan the hat separately. If a woman has an elaborate hairdo, you'll want to scan around her head. Turn, please. Repeat this basic process on the front side. You must check arms, legs, and pocket areas carefully. Never attempt to scan between the legs of either a man or woman. Inspect trouser pockets from the outside. Always be careful never to place your detector in front of a person's face. To scan feet and ankles, sweep the super scanner perpendicularly and approximately one to two inches high. If you ever encounter any interference, simply press and hold this button and your detecting sensitivity will be slightly reduced. This enables you to conduct a complete inspection without interference from rebar and other nearby metallic objects. Closely inspecting a person's feet may cause you to bend over, but never kneel in front of a person you're inspecting. This inspection of ankles and feet will probably seem difficult at first, but once again, you'll soon develop your own techniques. It's a good idea to make certain that the person you're scanning is aware that the detector is operating. You can achieve this goal by making certain the person sees you detect a wristwatch or ring. You must learn the reason for every detection signal you get. You must see and inspect the object or objects causing the signal. Never let a person simply point to a belt buckle or a piece of jewelry and try to prevent further inspection. Make certain you find the jewelry causing any alarm and look behind that big buckle. When you get a signal from a trouser pocket, you should never let a person merely jingle coins. Make that person remove them and let you test again. Use a container such as this to hold items removed from a person. Visually inspect these items yourself to make certain they don't contain a weapon. You should even gently squeeze a cigarette pack, for example. A person could have a weapon on a necklace that's suspended where it is hidden behind clothing. Make certain you can see all jewelry and determine exactly what metallic object causes each signal. You'll encounter such common objects as pant zippers and bra snaps. You'll often see decorative pins. Make certain, however, that the object making your detector signal is only a pin. How are you? Would you turn, please? But always remember that it's your job to inspect all individuals who pass before you. If any of them refuse to be inspected or try to cause trouble in any other way, carefully follow the instructions you have been given by your supervisor. Of course, you'll want to follow all of your supervisor's instructions about forbidden or prohibited objects you detect and what to do with them, and about the individuals who are carrying these objects. Be absolutely certain of all these instructions. If you're not sure, ask questions. You have an important job, and the super scanner is an excellent tool to help you accomplish your mission. It's a carefully engineered scientific instrument, yet it's rugged enough to take the wear and tear of normal use. You can depend on your super scanner. 